Hey everyone, if you're wondering why the stock market is down so much today, it's because of what Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen told The Atlantic a few days ago in a recorded interview that was released to the public today. It's she said that we may have to raise interest rates, which would collapse asset prices everywhere, make stocks go down. And if you're wondering why that's the case, I'm gonna explain it in this video, as well as giving you an update on the latest with the stimulus proposal. We know that Mitch McConnell is back in action saying that he is not going to support the Democratic stimulus bill from Joe Biden. He's not going to support $4 trillion of spending, $3 trillion of spending. He's going to support nothing more than just about $550 billion, which is an astronomical sum of money in and of itself. But relative to the two stimulus bills Joe Biden has proposed, it is a drop in the bucket. That means that they're going to have significant partisan conflicts between the two. And Joe Manchin, once again, is going to be the deciding vote. And he has commented to a few reporters on some very interesting things on the stimulus bill, which may impact whether or not it ultimately passes. My name is Kevin Conway. I make stimulus news update videos and other personal finance videos all the time. I'm a real estate investor full time. So if you want to learn more about that, check out my previous video and some of the proposals that Joe Biden has in his newest plan and how it'll affect real estate investing. Now, with that being said, let's get right into what I think is the most important news that we've had in quite some time. So we know that Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, who was formerly the chair of the Federal Reserve under Barack Obama, she came out and said to the Atlantic that it may be that interest rates will have to rise somewhat to make sure that our economy doesn't overheat, even though the additional spending is relatively small relative to the size of the economy. She told in a pre-recorded interview to the Atlantic's Future Economy Summit, this is coming from the Wall Street Journal and it has been reported everywhere. That means that rising interest rates are on the horizon a lot sooner than a lot of people thought. Why is this significant? Well, like I said, Janet Yellen was formerly the chair of the Federal Reserve. While she's not the chair anymore, it seems obvious that she has an insight as to whether or not interest rates will ultimately rise. And those comments are scaring investors everywhere. That's why you're seeing the stock market drop so much. So why does, this, does the stock market drop if interest rates rise? It doesn't just affect things like mortgage rates or credit card rates. While it does, that is not the reason why the stock market is dropping. It's actually because of the way interest rates affect asset values. Now, this is a point that I think it's highly important to understand if you're an investor out there, if you're somebody who's new to stock market investing, you have Robinhood or whatever, or you're more sophisticated, it's highly important to understand this one major point about interest rates and asset values. Put simply, as interest rates rise, asset values fall. Now, why is that the case? Well, the interest rate the benchmark interest rate that everything is compared to, also known as the risk-free rate, it's traditionally known as the 10-year treasury rate. The 10-year treasury tends to move when the Federal Reserve moves interest rates as well. So that means that the risk-free rate goes higher when the Federal Reserve pushes interest rates higher. Now, why is that important? Because the risk-free rate is what all investments are compared to. Two, so say you have an investment that costs $100 and it produces you $5 of income annually. That's a 5% return. Well, if the risk-free rate of return is zero or 1%, which it basically is right now, the 10-year treasury is around 1.5%, then that, interest, uh, that, that premium you get on your company, the $100 company producing $5 of income, that seems pretty good. You're getting a 5% return by taking a little bit of risk by buying a company which could go down in value, could go up in value, value could have those cash flows impacted in the future or not and you are getting compensated fairly but if interest rates rise and the risk-free rate rises as well say it rises to five percent or let's say six percent well you would never buy that company that produces five dollars of income at a hundred dollar valuation giving you a five percent return because companies are risky they could lose money they're not guaranteed they have risk which means that they must always carry a risk premium extra return that you get for buying a risk asset, which means that the interest rate or the dividend rate, the yield, whatever you want to call it, on your company must increase correspondingly if the risk-free rate of return 
increases in kind. And what does that do to asset values? Well, think about it. If you have a company that originally cost $100 and it produced $5 of income, giving you a 5% yield, well, if you wanted a higher yield, you would have to pay less for that company. That $100 company, let's say you cut it in half and it went to $50. All of a sudden, $5 of income on a $50 company, that is a 10% return. That may be more suitable if the risk-free rate of return increases correspondingly. As you will see, $100 to $50, that is a decrease in value of the company, a decrease in asset values. That is how interest rates affect asset values. Now, the flip side is true. If interest rates fall, asset prices tend to increase, which has happened in the last few years with the stock market. As you'll see, the stock market has gone on an absolute tear, and that is largely because of the way investors are valuing future cash flows from companies. The reason they're valuing that higher in the past is because interest rates were lower. The opposite is true. People are paying more for companies to get a yield that has a premium on the risk-free rate of return. That is how asset values and interest rates are so corresponded, so correlated with one another. That's why when Janet Yellen comes out and says we may have to raise interest rates, well, that's why the stock market went down in value. If you have any questions about that at all, please let me know in the comments below. It's something that I actually do all the time. I'm an investor full time. Now I focus on real estate, but I have a stock portfolio as well. So comment below if you have any questions or want me to do any future videos on stock market investing or real estate investing. Now let's get to the stimulus bill because ultimately if we have more stimulus, it seems obvious the interest rates will have to rise following the logic of Janet Yellen. If we have the economy overheating because we're spending too much money, we're pumping too much money into the system, then we have to raise interest rates. Now, what do the Republicans think about this proposal? Well, like I said, Mitch McConnell is not in favor of passing any more massive stimulus bills. He's in favor of doing a targeted infrastructure package, which spends money on roads and bridges, but not so much on the social infrastructure. So he said, I don't think there'll be any Republican senators, none, zero, for the $4.1 trillion grab bag. That's what he's calling the two bills that Joe Biden has proposed, the American Families Plan and the other stimulus bill focusing on physical infrastructure. So Mitch McConnell said that the Republicans made a counteroffer of $568 billion packages that focuses specifically on transportation infrastructure. And we actually have one other Democrat, Joe Manchin, as we've talked about before, who's in favor of narrowly targeting this infrastructure package, making it smaller and not jacking, uh, you know, uh, tax rates or, or borrowing more money to fund it. We know that uh, Joe Manchin says, I don't think we should have uh, a $2.3 trillion bill with all different subject matters in it. That's what he said. And again, Joe Manchin is a Democrat, but he is the most right wing Democrat, which means that he is the 50th vote that the Democrats need in order to pass any bill. So if Joe Manchin isn't in favor of the bill, well, then it's not going to pass. And it seems like he needs it to be a lot smaller in order to pass it. But Joe Manchin is in favor of raising taxes, but only on certain people and only in limited ways. He said that whether it's 500 billion or 600 billion or 1 trillion, we have to pay for it, which means we have to raise taxes on certain people to pay for it. And, I, and we have to make sure that we don't continue to add to this crippling debt to pass on to to future generations. He's concerned about the national debt because right now our deficits are enormous, which means we're adding enormously to the national debt. That's what he's concerned about. So it's going to be interesting to see whether or not this stimulus package goes in full force, whether it starts with a T, a trillion, or it's in the billions. I think that's significantly going to impact the likelihood of interest rates rising because we have $4 trillion of infrastructure package, which is what Janet Yellen was referencing. Well, then it seems obvious that the interest rates will rise dramatically in the short term. But if we only have a small package, then we know that the interest rates are less likely to increase. And you can actually see this with the 10-year treasury over the last six months, the 10-year treasury went from about 70 basis points, which is 0.7%, to around 1.5%, and actually a little bit higher than that in a short period of time. And in interest rate land, that is a dramatic upswing because people are anticipating more government spending, higher deficits, and a overheated economy and higher interest rates. That is why the stock market went down in value, and that is why you should stay focused on investing for the long term. You should continue investing in broad-based index funds like I do, and then selectively pick your stocks that you think are most valuable. One thing to note, that while interest rates rise, it makes companies that have less cash flow and higher multiples 
uh, actually less value over time because the future cash flows are going to be less valuable since interest rates, the risk-free rate of return is higher in the short term, which is why technology companies are actually getting hammered the most today. If you wanna know more about that, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Thanks.